And so this is a 3D actuator modeling in SimLab example I want to, to show you today. So maybe first I will briefly introduce what SimLab is. And for those of you who don't know, this will be, a, let's say, the future of the, the Flux activity. So first of all, SimLab is uh, one of our preprocessor, postprocessor for multiphysics. So this is a place from where you can actually define models for many different solvers within Altair solvers or in other external solvers. Uh, you can see on the top when you start it, you have a list of solutions. So you, you can really prepare models for many different physics from there. And what we'll try to do today in this live demo in a very short time is actually to reproduce one of the, the examples we have from the traditional flux. So if you go to open example 3D translating motion, so we have this, this actuator there. And that's the example I want to do in SimLab. features in this SimLab version. And we can see how we can produce this model in a very efficient and quick way. So to start with, just to save a bit of time, instead of importing a CAD, which would be already solved, uh, what I've done is I actually created a sketch. So this took me uh, a few minutes to build. So basically, I built the, the drawing myself, and I can add all the dimension to it. So this is a lot more flexible to what you're used to if you're a Flux user. Uh, and it's uh, very practical to put like things like parallel uh, angles, uh, specific condition between points. So it's very easy to, to go around and make sure you, your whole drawing is uh, fully defined. And any dimension you see here could become a parameter. So in this example, there will be no parameter. But just to show you, this could be your starting point with parameters. Uh, and basically, from there, we're going to build the model. So First steps to build the model would be to transform this sketch into faces. Okay, so when I do that, I now have two surfaces. Okay, I can hide the, the sketch. And I can even build the geometry from them. So from the geometry ribbon, I can extrude these two faces. Uh, the dimension is already there. And there we go. We have the two surface body, which I can hide. And we have these two volume bodies, which I can rename, so we can recognize them a bit more easily. We have the top and bottom parts. Okay. Right. So what we can do is we can actually start the, the solution we want to use. In this case, we'll use the electromagnetic solution, which are all the flux-based uh, solutions in this case. And we'll focus on the magnetic transient for this example. So you see magnetic transient, solver is flux. Uh, let's select 3D. I can already enter the, the scenario. So I just prepared it before, so the, it kept the, the previous values. But this is the final time of my scenario, and this is the, the time step. So I'm creating the solution. And once you have a solution defined, you can see now on the top you have the, the full workflow. So from geometry, analysis, circuit and solving and result. You can also go uh, tab by tab if you want to make it easier to, to follow. But just so you see, so on the geometry part, we could have imported a CAD, we could have cut it to the right format. There's also a few templates for electric machines that we will not cover in this time, but make sure you subscribe to the third session, I think. There is a, a YASA example, so we'll use this, uh, this template to build axial flux machines, for example. But what we want to do is prepare the mesh for this one. So what we can start with is to use this mesh control. So it's a way to, as it says, control the mesh. And we can define like a thinner mesh in these gaps here where the, the air gap will be. So just to make sure we have a small mesh in this area. Okay, this one, this one, this one. Okay, so for all these faces, I will put a smaller mesh of 0.5 millimeter. And globally, for all the rest of the model, I will use this tetra mesh. So I just select these two bodies and I will put a two millimeter mesh. So you can notice that there's a create matching mesh option. So this is very important for flux applications because it means any bodies that are touching each other, it will make a sort of assembly before meshing and make sure you have a, a conform mesh between the parts. 
So now it's done. I already have my mesh. So actually, this is one quarter of the geometry, uh, but we'll see that in a moment. So I'm done with the mesh side. What I can do from now is follow from left to right the different steps and make sure I define everything. So the first step is actually to include this uh, mesh body into my solution. So that way I can uh, define boundary conditions of them. So especially I would need to define symmetry and infinite box. So I need to make sure they are included. And now maybe what we can do is we can use, just use the analysis ribbon. So that way we can see uh, only what we need to see. So first, before even edit solution, we have materials. Uh, so we can create magnetic materials from SimLab, of course. And there's even a material database that we can use. So in my case, let's go to electromagnetic, uh, soft magnetic, and I can import, for example, this uh, M400. So it's not a laminated material in this case, but uh, just to make it simpler, I will use this uh, material which exists already. And to assign it, there's nothing simpler. So you just select your two bodies, right click, material, and then you can choose from here the, the material you want to assign them. You can also do it from here, actually, from the, the assembly browser. You can uh, select the material for, for each body individually from here. You can, you can make sure they are assigned to the correct one as well. So from there, we can add the symmetries. So there's actually one symmetry in the front, which is a tangential magnetic field. And there's another symmetry on the side here, which is also a tangential magnetic field. And so everything you create for the loads and boundary condition, it will add up here in the solution browser. So we can see we have our mesh bodies in there. We have two symmetries. Next thing to add will be infinite box. So because I defined two symmetries, I already have, uh, let's see, it, it knows that it needs to put the corner of the box over there. And I can just make the box a little bit uh, bigger in this dimension, just to allow more space. And I can keep it this way. So when I do this, it's going to actually create the geometry missing the, the box and also mesh the, the surrounding volume around the, the device. Actually, this surrounding volume, it will be remeshed at every time step in our application here. There we go. We have our infinite box, some air volume here, and the magnetic part in the middle. If we continue through the list of buttons, uh, so there's no magnet in this one, so no need to use this button. Uh, we need a coil in this case to supply our actuator. And we have these non-mesh coils, the same as we used to have in Flux. Uh, we can do one with the rectangular section. You can see straight away, it makes a preview of that coil. So I know already the dimension, 24, 28, a fillet in the corner, over there. And then it's 6 and 49.2. So you can see we have our coil. Uh, we don't need to duplicate it in this case by symmetry. Uh, it will not duplicate it uh, anyway. We can reverse the orientation. The orientation, you can actually see it with these little uh, red arrows on the orange line. And now we can see our coil uh, being defined and we can see its orientation straight away. Then we have a few things we're not going to use in this case, but passive solid conductor would be for any parts with eddy current. So things like magnets for permanent magnet machines. Uh, sheet lamination would be also very useful for uh, motor applications, but not in this time. Uh, but we need to define a motion because in our case, the, this green part on the top that I'm selecting will be going up and down. So this will be moving. The non-mesh code is not moving, so we don't select it. This is a translation. Uh, I can verify this is on the Z-axis translation, okay. Uh, actually, you can define it as impulse position, impulse speed, or couple load. In our case, it will be a couple load, which means the, the force applied will make it move. And there are some uh, inertia, like mass and friction coefficient that are already entered in this case that would be used uh, to slow it down, let's say. And something we should not forget is to define 
mechanical stops. So that means that if this goes too low, it will stop to, uh, otherwise it will uh, interfere with the bottom parts. So let's put the maximal stop at six millimeters. So that's our starting position, six millimeters. We start with the open position and we'll go until uh, that position. So that would be a position very, very close to, to being completely closed. And last thing, very important, is the type of the air. So all the air surrounding this, in this case, it will be immersion in the air, which means it will be remeshed uh, every time. We do this, and now we're almost done. So we've done all the physical definition, and we just need to supply the coil. So we just need to create a, a voltage source. So you see it adds uh, a little tab on the right where we can draw our circuit. Uh, we do a coil and we do a ground. And so we can quickly do a very simple drawing. Okay, so for the voltage, I want to put uh, 24 volts. So actually, if I put volts and press apply, it will convert to the, the current units in, in this project. And do like this. And for the coil, uh, I know the resistance of the coil, so we enter it here. And this coil would be linked with the non-mesh coil that I have here. So I select it here. And then we can put number of turns. So each of these values, these numbers, they can also be parameters. So when you right-click on these fields, it allows you to create parameters. Uh, and each parameter is defined in a specific unit, so you cannot uh, really mix them up. So you don't make any mistakes and you can only see the ones which are relevant to your uh, the type of definition you're doing. So yeah, okay. And basically that's it. We've done the, all the workflow. We can adjust some of the solution settings. So we have, go there again. We have uh, result requests, which allows us to add some things to be available as a result. So most of the time, everything is already available, like force, position, the current in the coil will be available. So we don't need to modify this. And we can also customize the format and execute options. Uh, so here we can choose to start with the static initialization, and we can choose number of cores and the amount of memory, for example. So we don't change this this time. And basically, we can click on solve, and it's going to solve this, this scenario for us. So it should take about four or five minutes, this scenario I've prepared before. Uh, to be a bit faster, I can just open the one I solved just before. So when you finish solving, it looks like this. So it will display some results straight away. Uh, you can play the nice animation of the, the actuator closing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's my actuator closing. If I right click, I can even show the full model. So that's our full actuator actually closing. Okay. And you have different type of results you can do, like you can obviously plot things. So if you're going to these curves, uh, you're able to plot, for example, from the coil, you can plot the, the current in the coil. So to add them to the, the plot, you can plot all the mechanical things like and plot uh, position. Okay, so we see we start from a upper position and then it goes down until the mechanical stops at this level. Yeah, we can plot the force as well, like the other ones. So that's the force exerted on the apply on the on the mechanical parts and so on. So all the results are there. You can plot them very easy. And here we can see, obviously, the contour. We can do the animation. We can also display them as a as vector. Yeah. <laughs> with the full view, it's a bit uh, too hard to see. We can make somebody's uh, transparent to see a bit better. But yeah, typically you have access to all of those results. 
And also, if you'd like, you can also do right click view in flux. So if there's something you cannot do today in SimLab, you can still do it in flux. Uh, but it, if it's not possible, it will be soon as we're really improving all of this uh, really quickly. And same thing, if you add some parameters into this uh, single solution, you could also do then a DOE to uh, replicate the same workflow, but with multiple values of the parameter and export that DOE to hyperstudy if you need to. 